I believe in miracles because I believe in God. This is the message this ministry is taking to the world through signs, wonders, miracles, and healings. You are responsible before God for today. God wants to show His power and His greatness in our lives. Greetings in the name of the Lord and welcome to the Ernest Angley Hour. I'm the Reverend Chris Mockmer. I'm a pastor at Ernest Angley's Grace Cathedral. I'll be your host for the program today. And what a program we have for you. Good music and singing by different soloists and artists. Also, we have for you a very special sermon by the Reverend Steve Millar. Then you'll watch as people receive prayer. God moves to bring healing and deliverance. And friend, as you watch others receive prayer, you can receive also. But first, we have for you a great number by the Jubilee Youth Choir. Whatever you need, whatever you may need. 
watch the news, it's plain to see the signs are all around. My heart's full of joyfulness, I'm about to leave the ground. We're getting out, oh we're getting out. Hallelujah, spill the air with the rapture shout. We're getting out, oh we're getting out. message is, How Good Is Your Word? My opening scripture can be found in Psalms chapter 18, verse 30. As for God, His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler, meaning a shield, to all those that trust in Him. This scripture tells us that you can put your trust in the Word of God and He will protect you in your time of need. God's Word has been tried and tested down through the years and we have found it to be true. I know without a shadow of a doubt that what God speaks will come to pass. We know that God cannot lie. I want you to examine your word tonight. When your word is tried and tested, will it be found to be true? Is your word dependable? We as Christians are to be like Jesus. We represent Jesus. But do your actions and your words measure up to God's words? God's measuring stick? When you tell someone that you are going to do something for them, do you follow through with your commitment? If the commitment becomes an inconvenience to you, do you break your commitment because you don't want to be put out? Maybe you think it's no big deal to break your commitments or obligations that you made to others. Maybe you feel that they'll understand. What they will understand is that you're not a person of your word and that they can't depend on you. you ha they will have no confidence in your word then. 
When you give a person your word, it should mean something to you and to that person. But do you put value on your word? If you don't put value on your own word, then nobody else will either, including God. It's time for us to examine our actions and make sure that we haven't become like the untrustworthy actions of today's society. It's hard to trust many people today because they are not true to their word. Many people are looking out for themselves and they don't even give it a second thought to tell a lie or back out of a commitment. Decades ago, people would depend on a verbal contract. A simple handshake would seal the deal. But not today. People will even try to get out of a written contract if it will not benefit them. They'll think, who cares? It doesn't matter that I promise and commit it to that person. We need to make sure that we don't fall into that weak way of thinking. It's better for you not to make a commitment than to turn around and break it. In business, it's important to be known for keeping your word. A customer will stay loyal to that business if they can trust you. People will take notice when you stand up and do the right thing. But they will also notice and remember when you don't do the right thing. How do you measure up to God's word? Can people depend on your word? Like, can they depend on your word more than maybe someone else that, you're, that they don't trust? Where do you fall in the scale? Are people counting on you and you let them down? Noah had to trust every word God gave him in order for him to be successful in his mission to escape the flood. Think about how much dishonesty and corruption was around Noah on a daily basis. He probably couldn't trust anyone but his wife and his children. That could have, been, that could have made him very bitter, suspicious, distrusting of people. But he didn't let the surroundings of the violence and corrupt world hinder his relationship with God. The Bible lets us know in Genesis chapter 6, verse 9, Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. Noah was a perfect man, a man without blemish. Noah went against the corrupt ways of the world, and he stood for truth, and his whole household were saved from destruction. God trusted Noah to follow through with his great plan. If you were in Noah's shoes, would God be able to trust you, or would he be questioning your dependability? You are only as good as your word. So the question is, how good is your word? God made a covenant or promise with Noah that he would not destroy the earth again with a flood, and he went a step further to provide a rainbow to remind Noah and all future generations that his promise would stand true for all time and eternity. In Genesis chapter 9, verses 13 through 15, I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass, when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. When you make a covenant or a promise with God, do you keep it? 
What if God decided that thousands of years have passed since he made that promise to Noah? And he changed his mind about using another flood and to destroy the earth. We would lose all faith in God's word. Do you put a time limit on your promises? Let me repeat that. Do you put a time limit on your promises? Do you think because time has passed that you no longer have to follow through with the commitment or promise that you made to others? God had great confidence in Noah. But how much confidence does he have in you? If God called you like he called Noah, would your answer be yes as long as Noah said yes? Noah's yes stood for a long time, well over 100 years. When you say yes to God, is it going to stand as long as 100 years? Jesus brought us his promise for everlasting life. In John chapter 5, verses 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into the condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. People that hear the word and believe God and accept Jesus into their heart will pass from death to life. In Noah's day, the plan of salvation was extended to all people, just like it is today. The ark provided shelter when the storms came, and God took care of Noah and his family. God is good to take care of us. When we have Jesus in our heart, the people in Noah's day had an opportunity to step into the ark of safety. They just did not believe that judgment was going to fall. When the waters of judgment started to rise, Noah and his family were always above the waters of judgment in the ark of safety. What about the people outside that did not accept the word of God? They were not prepared for judgment. I'm sure they tried to get to high ground climbing the closest mountain they could come to? Can you imagine climbing a mountain when it's pouring down rain and the mud's just sliding down the mountain? It's very difficult. Even if you and your family got to the top of the mountain, the water level still rose above the mountain. God's plan of salvation saved Noah and his family. And having in our heart Jesus is what's going to keep us above judgment. The people of Noah's day had seven days of grace after the ark was built. Then God's judgment would fall and every living creature would be destroyed. In Genesis chapter, chapter 7, verse 4, for yet seven days, meaning seven days of grace, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights, and every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. God gave us a plan of salvation, and we are in seven days of grace until God's judgment falls. We know judgment will not fall in a way of the water rising above the earth again. But judgment will fall. And just like in Noah's day, the people will have nowhere to hide. Noah believed in God and his word. And he passed the test. When testing time came and you had to prove your faith, did you stand the test? Abraham stood the test when God told him to sacrifice his son Isaac. Now, God didn't ask Abraham to sacrifice his son because he thought Abraham would fail the test. God asked Abraham to do it because he had confidence that
that Abraham would follow through with the task, and it would become a great testimony of his love for God. We are all going to be tested, whether we like it or not. The question is, are you going to pass the test so that God will get the glory? And we read about the testimony in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 17 through 19. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called accounting, that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. God made Abraham a promise, and Abraham knew God would not fail him. He proved that he trusted in God by his actions. When God told Abraham to sacrifice his son, the Bible says he woke up early, and he started his three-day journey to Mount Moriah. Abraham didn't procrastinate. Abraham didn't grumble or complain about God's request. No, he focused on God's word, God's promise, and he went by faith. He traveled three days knowing that he was going to have to kill his son, Isaac, when he arrived at his destination. He had plenty of time to think about his situation. He never changed his mind. He was focused on God's word and God's promise. When Isaac asked his father, where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham tells his son, my son, God will provide himself a lamb. Abraham bound his son and laid him upon the altar. Abraham drew back the knife to complete the act of obedience to God. Fortunately, the Lord sent an angel to stop Abraham from killing his son Isaac. And in his heart, he really did go through with the task. God is not going to ask us to do something that he's not willing to do. Jesus had to make that journey carrying the cross to Mount Calvary. I'm sure it was hard for God knowing what was going to happen to his only begotten son. God willingly let his son Jesus sacrifice his life. And Abraham was willing to sacrifice Isaac. Jesus willingly carried a wooden cross, and Isaac was willing to carry the wood for the sacrifice on the mountain. And, it was, and that was the only way that you can accept Jesus Christ into your heart is through the plan of salvation, if you willingly accept Jesus. The only way Abraham was able to have the strength to travel the road to Mount Moriah was because he held on to the word of God. The psalmist said in Psalms chapter 119, verse 11, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. The only way we will have strength when we are faced with a trial that leads us down the road to Mount Moriah, so to speak, is for us to hide the word of God in our hearts so that we will never let it go. It's up to us to have Jesus in our heart and hide that word at all times. Remember, the devil is going to do everything he can to rob us of the word. He knows that God's word is true and that it will never fail. But he tries to make people doubt it so that they will fail and hold on, so they won't hold on to the promises of God. The devil will try to rob Jesus when he tempted him in the wilderness after Jesus fasted 40 days. But Jesus answered the devil in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. But he, meaning Jesus, answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. 
Are you living daily by every word that pre proceedeth out of the mouth of God? Are you claiming the promises that God has for you in his holy Bible? God has promised us healing and miracles. Maybe you need a miracle tonight. And God's word says that you can have your miracle. He has promised to supply all our needs according to his riches and glory. God has promised you forgiveness for your sins. If you confess your sins and accept Jesus Christ into your heart, then you're promised eternal life. We can depend on all the promises of God. It's up to us to meet the condition of that promise. All we have to do is trust and obey the Lord. But so many people today go their own way. They want to claim the promise of eternal life, but they don't want to live for Christ. And in John, excuse me, in 1 John chapter 2, verse 4, he that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So basically, this scripture is saying that if you are not obeying the Lord and all his commandments, and you're claiming to be a Christian, a child of God, then you're a liar. In Jesus, excuse me, Jesus tells us in Mark's gospel, the 12th chapter, the 30th verse, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. That's the first commandment. Do you love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength? We know Abraham did. Abraham passed the test. He proved it to God. Friend, if there is any disobedience in your life today, if your word is not as dependable as God's word, then you need to renew your covenant with the Lord. Let the Lord know that you want to rededicate your life to him that you will never fail your promise to serve him the rest of your life. God doesn't want you to, doesn't want to hear at insincere words of repentance. He wants you to give your word and make sure that you stand on that word. God is counting on you to get this gospel to the world. We just need to show God that we're sincere in our hearts when we accept Jesus. When Jesus comes in, he'll make you a new creature in Christ. All those things will be washed away, all those sins. You'll be covered in the blood of Jesus. That's in the word of God. Friend, I'd like to give you this opportunity to accept Jesus Christ into your heart right now by praying with me. Say, oh God, oh God. save my soul. Save my soul. Forgive, me for my Forgive me for my sins. But I have come home to serve you the rest of my life. And I believe that the blood of Jesus washes away all of my sins. Come into my heart, Jesus. Come on in, Jesus. Amen. Friend, if you meant that prayer, you have Jesus Christ in your heart. You have the healer. Let's get your miracle for you today. It doesn't matter what sickness or disease is in your body. God made you. He can heal you. At this time, put your hand on your listening device. device. Or those of you that are watching, Put your hand against my hand on the screen. This is a point of contact. And let's just pull down heaven together. Lord, Heavenly Father, you know what their need is. 
break their bondages and set them free. We curse every sickness, every disease in their body. Heal in the holy blood name of Jesus. Heal in the holy blood name of Jesus Christ, I pray, and let everything come to normal. Friend, look for every sign of improvement and always give God the praise, the honor, and the glory. And write to us. You can send your email to testimonies at earnestangely.org. And now at this time, friend, I'd like to encourage you to go on and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. All you have to do is say one glory right after another. Just praise Him with your whole heart, sending those glories right up to heaven, one glory right after another. And I'm going to call down this great anointing upon you to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Lord, Heavenly Father, I call down this great anointing upon the people. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And just keep on praising Him. Praise Him with your whole heart until He comes in. And God bless you. How good is your word? Friend, I hope you enjoyed that sermon by the Reverend Steve Millar. At this time, I want to take this opportunity to encourage you partners of this Jesus ministry. Read the letter Reverend Angley sent to you this month. Over the course of the next two months in October and November, we are praising the Lord, honoring Him for all of our many blessings, spiritual, physical, and financial. In the letter Reverend Angley sends to you this month, he really goes into that how we must always glorify the Lord for all that he's done in our lives and do send in that special offering, if you will, in honor and glory of all that God has done for you in your life. And friend, I want to encourage you, if you're watching today and you're not a partner of this Jesus ministry, you can become one. We encourage you to do so. Help us take Jesus to the world. We're winning the lost at any cost. And friend, you can donate. Simply go to our website, earnestangely.org, and give whatever the Lord lays upon your heart, and you will be blessed spiritually, physically, and financially. And you can always send in your support by mail. Send it to Ernest Angley Ministries, P.O. Box 1790, Akron, Ohio, 44309. Those of you watching in Canada, write to Ernest Angley Ministries, Box 970, Station U, Toronto, Ontario, M8Z5P9. And friend, when you stand by and give your support, you will get two giant little books this month. It's a special offer you will be greatly blessed. And the first book is entitled, Deliverance Will Come, followed by, He Delivered Them, He Will Deliver You. Again, two giant little books from the Reverend Ernest Angley when you support this month. So give your best and we will send this to you. And friend, we have much, much in store for you later in the program. First, we have more good music and singing coming up. And then a little later on, it will be time for the healing line. And you will watch as people receive blessings, miracles, healings. And remember, friend, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what he has done in the past, he will do for you. Right now, we have a great song by Rocky Lowther. I didn't want to talk to him, didn't want to be bothered, I was lost in sin, lost my best friend, every single day that went by, kept telling self I'd be alright, I needed him, oh I need 
I didn't have an appetite For the word of God that night I just came for fun So lost and undone The preacher gave an altar call But I didn't want to look so small I needed him Oh, I needed him I finally reached out With a heart full of sin He gave me a chance To invite him in I got saved I got Jesus in my heart I got old time religion Oh, the love he did in part I got saved I got really born again Set free by Jesus' blood Oh, the joy that he brought in I got saved I got Jesus in my heart I got old time religion Oh, the love he did in part I got saved I got really born again Set free by Jesus' blood Oh, the joy that he brought in I got saved Praise God I got saved
wheels on fire. fire. Soon we'll say goodbye. Let's get them up to speed. Keep those wheels in tune. Don't let any wheels go flat. For Jesus is coming real soon. Don't slow down. Don't speed up. Oh no. Stay in time with Jesus. Rolling with the Jesus wheel. That great wheel's are rolling, 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 rolling. That wheel in the middle of the wheel soon is gonna fly away. That great wheel's are rolling, rolling, and all your wheels must fly. Get those wheels on fire. Soon we'll say goodbye. Shout, heaven's mine, let's keep those wheels on fire And ready to fly on out Just like Elijah's chariot We're leaving here with a shout That great wheels are rolling, 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 rolling That wheel in the middle of the wheel soon is gonna fly on
as a sign of your soul. Stepping fast, stepping slow. Lord, I'm going wherever you go. Go to step, go steps, go steps, go steps. I'm going to step, hey steps, hey steps, hey steps. I'm going to step, miracle steps, miracle steps, miracle steps. I'm going to step, Father Jesus, step, Father Jesus, step. Seven day I said. by the hallelujahs. Now, taking you into Ernest Angley's Grace Cathedral, watch as people receive prayer. Jesus said in Mark's Gospel 16, verse 18, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Watch and be blessed. Lord, Heavenly Father, we sanctify in the blood name of Jesus Christ. We give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory for what you're going to do tonight. Lord, we heap all the glory onto you. Lord, let them receive in a mighty way as we give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory for what you're going to do tonight to heal the people. Amen. God bless you. Where are you from? Kent. Kent? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> I have a broken bone on my foot for the last year. Okay. And it has not healed correctly. It's not healing right. And in fact, it's growing extra bone underneath. And the capillaries and the nerves are not supplying the right blood to the foot. Okay, and it's your this is my right, right foot? foot. I have a brace on right now. Okay. And I need it healed. Okay. And the diabetes healed. Well, God will do it, okay? He can make you whole all over. Lord, Heavenly Father, just heal her in the blood and name of Jesus as she yields on over to you. Lord, just correct that foot in a great and mighty way. We curse that diabetes in her body. Heal in the blood name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And let everything come to normal in her body. Recreate in a glorious way. In the blood name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Where are you from? Uh, or Cuyahoga Falls. Okay. Okay, I was diagnosed with mild hydrofibrosis. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's with my left kidney and my right kidney. They're swelling. And it's where the um, urine doesn't flow from the kidney to the bladder due to a blockage. It could be a kidney stone, a tumor, or a blood clot. But I need prayer for that. I'm a urinologist um, Wednesday morning. And then something here, uh, I don't know if it's associated with it, but uh, I asked my doctor, and she's thinking about putting the CAT scan in for that. But I'm going to wait till I see the urinologist, see if it's associated before I take any more tests, do what okay. he says. But I need prayer for both things. Okay. Lord, we curse that blockage in her body. Heal her in the blood name of Jesus Christ. Let everything come normal in her body as she yields on over to you. Heal her in the blood name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. God bless you. Where are you from? Stowe. Okay. Uh, Reverend, I've been having some sharp pains on the right side of my head. And I have a few internal uh, conditions that have started to show on my body. And lastly, I'd like to stand in for my granddaughter. She has bladder <clears throat> issues at night, mm -hmm. and the doctor has given her medicine, and nothing's working. Okay. Lord, you know what she needs? An all-out miracle for her body, and heal her granddaughter in the blood name of Jesus. And we curse that condition in her body. Heal in the blood name of Jesus and let everything come to normal. Amen. God bless you. Hi, God bless you. Where are you from? Um, Akron, Ohio. Okay. Uh, I just need a little more prayer for my back. Okay. Lord, you know what she needs. An all-out miracle for her back. Heal her in the blood name of Jesus as she yields on over to you. Amen. 
I need God bless a, you. God bless. Uh, I need a miracle for my feet. Okay, for your feet? Yeah. Okay. Lord, you know what she needs, an all-out miracle for her feet. Heal her in the blood name of Jesus. We curse that condition in her body. Heal in the blood name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. God bless you both. God bless you. Where are you from? Akron, Ohio. I came to get a miracle for my back. It's been, it was so bad. I just, it took my breath away. It felt like my back broke. So I wanted to get a miracle. Lord, Heavenly Father, we curse that symptom in her back. Heal her in the blood name of Jesus as she yields on over to you. Recreate in the blood name of Jesus and let everything come to normal. Give her the strength in her back in the blood name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. God bless you. Okay? All right. Hi, God bless you. Where Mom's are you? passing blood in her urine. Okay. You're passing blood in your urine? Okay. Yeah. Lord, let's just go ahead and pray then. Lord, we curse that condition in her body. Heal her in the blood name of Jesus. Let everything come to normal. Recreate in a glorious way. In the blood name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Heal her all over. Amen and amen. And do you, do you need prayer? Or no? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. Where are you from? I'm in New York City. Okay. Uh, I've Welcome. Uh, Is your first time here or no? I've been up here a couple okay. times. Yeah, I've struggled with uh, anxiety, depression, and alcohol in my past. Okay. And I'm just uh, one prayer that I don't struggle with that no more. Mm -hmm. Did you get saved tonight or did you, uh, did you accept yeah, Jesus? Yes, I did. Okay. I gave Good. my life to Jesus. Okay. All right, well, let's just curse those conditions, okay? Lord, we curse those conditions in his body. Just heal him in the blood name of Jesus. And Lord, just heal him all over. Lord, take all those cravings away. Anoint him. Give him the peace in his mind. Give him the strength that he needs to walk in your Jesus' footsteps. Amen. God bless you. Keep bless on coming, you. okay? I will. God bless you. Where are you from? Virginia. Virginia. Yeah. Welcome. First time or been uh, here before? Second time. Second time. 24 okay. years. 24 years ago. Okay. And where are you from? I've spoken to you on the phone. Where we've been in the ministry since we were kids. Okay. Great. Great. Okay. Um, what do you need? Um, I'm struggling with alcohol for many years. Okay. And cigarettes. About 20, and cigarettes. 20 years or so. And, and tobacco. And you need your deliverance. Yes. I, you know, I've tried. I try. And it's just. <laughs> right. Right. Did you uh, accept Jesus tonight? Or? Yes. You did? Okay. Let's just curse all that. Lord, we curse that in his body. Lord, just give him the deliverance that he needs. Lord, we take that sickness out of his body. Lord, and just move in a special way. Lord, don't let him have any desire. Lord, give him that freedom. We curse that bondage in the blood name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. And let him receive all that you have for him. Thank you. Amen. God Amen. bless you, brother. God bless you. Thank you. Congratulations. Um, <laughs> you just prayer? Yeah, I wrecked my back, neck, and shoulders. I don't know what I did. I haven't been to the doctor. Okay. And uh, I also get terrible migraines and eye aches. And uh, my eyes are dry and they burn. And I've tried everything. I have like 20 different afflictions. Okay. But I believe in the blood and I believe in healing. So. Okay. You need the all out miracles. Yes. Lord, just anoint them all over. Heal them all over. Take all that sickness out of his body. Heal him in the blood name of Jesus. Break all that bondage and let him come to normal and give him the strength. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank God you. bless you. God Thank bless you for coming. Friend, our God is moving and blessing through this Jesus ministry. And if you have the opportunity, I'd like to invite you to pay us a visit because every weekend we have four services in two locations. Do be with us in the Friday night miracle service starting at 7 p.m. in our Cuyahoga Falls location. You'll enjoy more good music and singing, a wonderful sermon, and then there's prayer for those in need. Come and expect God to move for you. Saturday at 7 p.m. we have a youth service in our Akron location. This service is dedicated to the youth. We have a male and female speaker, our young people, they preach, testify, sing, and make music for the Lord. Come, you'll be blessed. Then Sunday, two services in our Cuyahoga Falls location. We have a morning worship service at 10 a.m. 
a special sermon in the main auditorium with more good music and singing. Also, we have Sunday school for the boys and girls in our junior church department. Then Sunday evening at 7 p.m., it's a great evangelistic service. Friend, be with us. We are interdenominational. You don't have to join Grace Cathedral to be in our services. You're always welcome to worship the Lord with us. And when you have the opportunity, go to our website, ernestangely.org, and read the latest edition of the Power of the Holy Ghost magazine. And the October edition is entitled The Touch of the Master's Hand, a special sermon by the Reverend Ernest Angley. So you can read this edition for free online at ernestangely.org. And friend, if you enjoy the program, maybe you've received a miracle or a healing through this Jesus ministry, we would love to hear about it. Send us your testimony. You can do so by email. Send that email to testimonies at ernestangely.org. And friend, I'd like to encourage you to partake in a special offer. If you would like a blessed cloth from this Jesus ministry, it's all according to Acts chapter 19, verses 11 and 12. And Reverend Angley has prayed over the cloth. It's anointed of God. It also comes with a pamphlet explaining all about the cloth. And when people use this cloth, people receive miracles, healings, and deliverance. They're blessed spiritually, physically, and financially. So request one on our website, ernestangely.org, or you can write to us, and it will be sent to you free. Well, friend, I hope you enjoy today's program. We look forward to seeing you next week. Always remember, you are special to God. Are you being blessed by this television program? Do you feel God's anointing every time you watch? I want to let you know that you can be blessed and feel this same anointing 24 hours a day, every day. People around the world are listening to Ernest Angley World Radio, and you can too. Just go to ernestangley.org to listen or download one of our apps. I know you will never be the same. Ernest Angley World Radio, a voice to the world. This program is paid for by the Ernest Angley Outreach Partners.